Okay, um, good morning. This is the, the chemical equilibrium or equilibrium concept chapter, which I'm going to um, give you some overview now to prepare you to um, perform, um, perform better on your assignments for this chapter of the unit four in, um, in Newton. So equilibrium is a state which there is no um, observable changes as time goes by. It means that um, so you start the reaction, the reaction is going to reach to a state that you don't see any change in concentration. The concentration of the reactant and the product is going to stay the same. When the um, chemical equilibrium reaches, when the reaction reaches to the equilibrium, the, you have a forward reaction and the reverse reaction happening at the same rate. So if one a molecule of reactant goes to product, one product would go to the reactant. That the equilibrium is shown by double arrow, especially if the size of the arrow is exactly the same, that means the reaction has reached equilibrium. So if you see a single arrow, it's the reaction is not at equilibrium and uh, either either direction. So if you see either one of these two, uh, means that the reaction is not at equilibrium. So you see the two arrow or one double arrow. If you see this also, it means the same thing. So the reaction is going forward and reverse at the same um, same time. So equilibrium when there is only change in the state is called physical equilibrium. When the nature of the compound is changing is a chemical equilibrium. At the equilibrium, concentration of the reactant and product is going to stay constant. You see that we have zero product to begin with, and we have more reactant. And regardless if this is zero or not zero, as long as it's changing, we don't have equilibrium. When the, re the rate or concentration stays the same, that's where we have equilibrium. So we could, in this case, your product it didn't start with a zero concentration. Um, it starts with a non-zero number, but it it reaches equilibrium when the you reach the, this diagram reaches the plateau. So what happens at the equilibrium based on the numerical value or concentration? So definitely, you all know that. The bracket shows concentration, uh, concentration of the reactant, concentration of the product. When at the beginning, what we have, we could have different numbers regardless of what is the, the number um, to begin with. At the equilibrium, uh, when it reaches to a, um, a certain level, so different value with the starting or initial concentration it could end up with a different uh, value for the uh, for the concentration at the equilibrium. But what is going to stay constant is the ratio of the product to the equilibrium um, or based on the balanced equation. So that ratio is going to stay, um, stay constant. So if you look at the, the balance equation here, we have reactant, um, coefficient for the reactant is one, coefficient for product is two, and then to write the equilibrium expression, um, you would say K equals concentration of the products over concentration of reactant raised to the power of their coefficient. Uh, coefficient for product is 2, so it re raised to the power of the coefficient. Coefficient for reactant is 1, and we don't have to write 1. So uh, equilibrium expression for reaction at equilibrium equals concentration of products over concentration of reactant 
raised to the power of coefficient, solids and liquids are not allowed. Pure solids, pure liquids are not allowed in the equilibrium expression, which we will see that definition also later, but I just wanted to say everything in one place. When you're writing the equilibrium expression, say concentration of product over concentration of reactants, raised to the power of the coefficient from the balance equation, solids and liquids not allowed. So the ratio of the products over the reactants raised to the power of the coefficient is going to be a constant number. What can change this number is the temperature. So we have to specify for the temperature that, the, that is this equilibrium constant is at this 25 degrees Celsius and is based on the balanced equation. So in general, the um, K concentration of products, when you have more than one product, so you put all, all the products, um, divide by concentration of the reactants raised to the power of their um, coefficient. So law of mass action or equilibrium constant expression. The value for K, if it's much greater than one, it means products are favored. More, more product has formed for that reaction. If the value for K is very small, that means reactants are um, favored. So the equilibrium, as soon as some, react, some product forms, then the reaction reaches equilibrium and a reverse reaction is going to kick in. So at the beginning, your reactant will start changing the product. And then at a certain point, some of the product would go to the reactant. But at one point, the rate of going from reactant to product is going to be equal or same rate and constant number, constant ratio based on the equilibrium expression. And at that point, we say that the equilibrium has reached and the given value is much smaller than one. That means reactants are reactants are um, favored in this case. So basically, it's a ratio that you're comparing the value. If we have gas in the um, reactant and product, we can express the equilibrium based on the pressure of the gas of reactants and the products. And that K is called Kp, which is the equilibrium expression based on pressure. Kc is um, for gas molecules, because for if we have aqueous solution, we don't have to express the Kc. Um, if you say K is acceptable, but for when you have gas reactants and products, Kc means that it is the equilibrium expression based on concentration of the product over concentration of reactant raised to the power of the coefficient. And Kp is the pressure of the product over pressure of reactant raised to the power of um, coefficient. Kc and Kp, they are related but they are not exact same numbers. They are related based on the change in number of moles, and they are related based on the um, temperature. So Kp equals Kc, Rt, R is the constant number for the gases, universal constant for gases, T is the temperature, and delta N, delta N is changing um, number of moles, and that is the number of moles of product minus number of moles of the reactant. So delta N is the number of moles of the uh, product over the reactant. So this is the KCRT delta N. So if we have the KP, um, we have the balance equation, we can calculate KC and vice versa. When we have liquid, or solid in a balanced equation, and we are writing the K expression, 
the liquid and solids should not appear in the, in the expression, um, the equilibrium expression. So pure liquid and pure solids should not appear. So Kc, in this case, concentration of the products over concentration of reactant raised to the power of the coefficient, which we have one for each one of them. Liquids and solids are not allowed, so we have the liquid here. We should not write in. Not to include some, and we don't. We are not going to put the include um, the units for it. The concentration for water is constant, also. How do you? calculate the value for Kc, first you must have balance equation. So when you have a balance equation, step two is to write the, uh, write the equilibrium expression, concentration of product over concentration of the reactant raised to the power of the coefficient. If the reaction, these are the, when you are talking about K, these reactions must be reactions at equilibrium. So the problem should say equilibrium concentration. So when you have equilibrium concentration, you can write the, the expression and replace these numbers. So we have the reaction that is happening between uh, chlorine and carbon monoxide changing to ClCl2. And with, the, with this, um, First, we balance the equation. We write the chemical reaction, balance equation. The value for pressure is not given. It's asking for Kc and Kp. If pressure was given, we would write, instead of concentration, we would write pressure. But since only concentration is given, we are going to calculate Kc and then use the formula to go from Kc to Kp which is the Kp equals Kc times Rt to the power of change in number of moles. So for Kc, we just replace the numbers. We have the concentration for um, CO, we have concentration for Cl2, and we have concentration for COCl2, and make sure that you are going to perform your calculation following the PEMDAS. That means parentheses first, multiplication before division. So you are going to multiply these two first and then divide 0.14 divided by the um, product of this multiplication. When you have the value for Kc, you need the delta n in order to change that to Kp. So Universal constant, we have this value 0 0.0821 liter atmosphere per mole degree Celsius. I'm sorry, per mole degree and a Kelvin. So we have to get um, this number memorized. And then temperature must be in Kelvin. Delta N, number of moles of product, gas, gaseous. Uh, product minus number of moles of gaseous reactants. We have one product and two reactants, and that's what, where we get the delta. Yeah. Then we calculate the Kp based on that. If the pressure is given for a balanced equation, pressure for gases is given, you can calculate the Kp, and if Kc is asked, we can also change that to the uh, Kc. But Kp, the units that is used for the, uh, for the pressure is ATM. So for concentration is always capital M, mole per liter, and then for pressure, ATM. How is this reaction different from others? You have two items here, one reactant and one product that is solid. So when you're writing K um, equilibrium expression, you cannot bring in the 
calcium carbonate because it's solid, so we, can, we have to take this out. And we cannot bring the calcium oxide because it's solid as a product. So the Kc only depends on um, value for CO2. Um, so Kp is the pressure of CO2 and Kc is the concentration of CO2 because concentration of the solids and pure liquids are not included in the K expression. So regardless of how much of calcium oxide we have or calcium carbonate we have, the concentration of the CO2 is at the equilibrium is going to be independent from these values so regardless of how the, the values is changing for from okay left to uh, right uh, we are going to have that uh, Okay, concentration of the uh, CO2 is going to be the same if, regardless if we have the, uh, we have high value for, um, or high quantity of calcium carbonate on the left side versus lower value for calcium carbonate on the right side. Um, so pressure or number of molecules of CO2 is independent from those values because based on this balance equation we have solid for these two compounds and uh, when we are writing the k um, if we write the kc is going to be concentration of co2 or kp which is pressure for co2 raised to the power of one Okay, in this reaction, as another example, we have one solid reactant, two gas, gaseous product. So if you have a gaseous product, if the reaction it gives us the pressure for gas, we, we are going to start with the Kp. If it gives concentration for the gas, we start with the Kc. In this case, pressure is, um, is given. So if the pressure is given, we are going to start with the Kp, and Kp equals pressure of the product, NH3, pressure of the second product, H2S, over the 1, because on the reactant side, we have a solid that we are not allowed to, to write. And the power for these is going to be, for the product is going to be 1, because the coefficient is um, one. When we calculate the Kp, then from Kp we can change to Kc. The relationship between the Kc and Kp is that Kc equals Kp RT uh, negative delta n. Pay attention to that please. If it's a Kp, delta n is positive. Kc delta n is negative. So basically, it's like a division by this. You divide by the RT. So the delta N is the number of moles of gas on the product side minus number of moles of the gas on the reactant side. 2 minus 0, it's 2. In this case, temperature um, is given at 295K. And if, not, if it's degree Celsius, you want to make sure to change it to Kelvin, and you can calculate the value for 
kc so first you are going to get the kp based on the values given this each might throw up you know because if you don't pay attention that is at each then you might think it's missing this is very simple when you have the uh, the answers actually uh, when you have reactions you have two step reaction then kc is the for the overall reaction is the multiple of steps kc for each step so this reaction is a two step reaction um, so you have k prime and k double prime step one step two the kc which is the overall reaction um, is multiple of the kc for each of the um, steps if you reverse the reaction, for reverse reaction, I think I have it in the next slide. For reverse reaction, when your reactant becomes your product, then you reverse a reaction. This is a reverse reaction. Then K for reverse reaction, K for reverse reaction is 1 over K for forward reaction. So we have the forward reaction, K. And then K prime is the reverse reaction equals 1 over um, K. So you can also um, use this whenever needed, or you could be asked as a multiple choice question. When the equation for reverse for reaction is written in the opposite direction, the equilibrium constant becomes the reciprocal of the original equilibrium constant. So, uh, what we learned so far, how to write the equilibrium constant expression. Um, concentration of the reacting um, are expressed, uh, compounds are expressed in capital M or mole per liter. And if it's gas, is going to be in ATM. Moles for concentration, pressure in atmosphere. When you have pure solids or pure liquids, they are not allowed <coughs> in the equilibrium expression. Um, so you have to make sure that you know what's the phase for reactants and or products and pay attention for pure liquids and pure solids, they are not allowed. Um, no unit for the equilibrium expression. So specify temperature and the balanced equation each k equilibrium or the equilibrium um, constant expression is written based on a specific balanced equation at the specific temperature if you change the temperature or you, uh, we are talking about different equation then um, it doesn't apply so it's specific if the reaction has more than one step, if it can be expressed based on two or more reactions, the equilibrium constant for overall reaction is given by product of equilibrium constants of individual reactions. So K, C was the K prime times K double prime, if you remember, for previous slide is that step one and uh, step two. The rate for forward reaction, rate for reverse reaction. If you write the rate, you're writing the rate based on the reactants only. Um, so reactants, and then this is the rate for um, written based on the product. At the equilibrium rate of the reactant, a forward equals the rate of the reverse reaction, and then rate of the reverse over rate of the um, forward over the rate of the reverse reaction basically is the kc or the k equilibrium this is another way of expressing the equilibrium constant because at the equilibrium um, expression uh, constant that means that forward reaction and the reverse reaction are equal doesn't mean that these values are 
um, the same, but when we have the, the rate for forward and the rate for reverse reaction, is going to that ratio is going to be constant. That ratio is constant. So Kc is a ratio of product over the reactant. Um, reaction coefficient. This is based on is is the expression is very similar to the equilibrium expression, with exceptions that. Uh, for equilibrium expression, you are using concentration at equilibrium. For Q, you are writing, uh, you are using concentration that is given, like given concentration or initial uh, concentration. So when you when you use like different concentration, you find the value if the concentration given are initial concentration. The value for Q, it can be less than Kc or greater than Kc. But the reaction is going to go forward or reverse until it reaches equilibrium. So if Qc is greater than Kc, what does it mean? If Qc is greater, that means you have more products than the reactants because the value for this ratio now is greater than Kc. That means you have more product. If you have more product, then the reaction should go producing more reactant until this two becomes same. If Qc happens to be the same as Kc, uh, like in this case, then the reaction is already at the equilibrium. The reaction can go reverse and uh, forward at the same rate concentration does not change for the products and reactants. If Qc is less than Kc, what does it mean? It means you don't have enough product yet to reach equilibrium. So if you don't have enough product to reach equilibrium, your reaction must go forward to produce more products. So more products is produced and uh, the more products is produced, then you have the products is more products produced until Q and K becomes the same um, value. So that means the equilibrium has reached. So basically, when QC is small, the forward reaction is going to take place. So the the system proceeds. Uh, from left to right of the reaction, basically forming more of the product until the ratio is seen as ratio for Kc. Calculation for the equilibrium concentration. How would you do the calculation at equilibrium concentration if the initial value is given for each of the reactant and product? First, you have to have a balanced equation. So express the equilibrium concentration. Equilibrium concentration for Kc that is used in terms of the initial concentration. So we are going to use initial concentration given and a single unknown x. So single unknown x. So you don't have multiple uh, variables when you have your um, equation. The that unknown x is going to represent the changing concentration of the reactant and product. Sometimes it could be just x, it could be 2x, 3x, depends on the coefficient of that specific reactant or product in the balanced equation. So we're going to write the equilibrium constant expression next. And then we are going to replace the concentration of the product and the reactant based on the initial concentration and the x value with changes. The term is called like ice. So you are going to use the initial and then you look at the change and what is the concentration at equilibrium. So it's called ice expression and we have example that I'm going to 
show you when the initial concentration is given. Then you find you are going to express the change based on the VAT single unknown X in order to find concentration at equilibrium. When you solve for X, then you can find the concentration at equilibrium for each of the reactant and product. Okay. Uh, we have the equilibrium constant given to us. With this equilibrium constant or reaction Br2 gas is going to 2Br gas. So initial concentration is given. The K value is given. So this is the K. So we have the Kc. We have the concentration for reactant and concentration for product, but these are the initial values. We are trying to find the values at equilibrium. First of all, you have to have the balanced equation. You start with the balanced equation. Initial value, this is the ice expression. Initial value, these are the given value for Br2 and the given value for concentration of Br. Then we are going to write the change based on the single variable or unknown x. Because it's reactant, reactant is going to product, we are going to express based on minus x. So um, you would say some of the reactant would go to product. How much reactant is going to go to product? If x number of moles of reactant goes to product, 2x is going to form. So this is going to be expressed as plus 2x. Why plus? What does plus and minus mean? It means reactant is being consumed and product is being um, produced. So by convention, we can use this. In very rare and specific cases, if we have too much of the react product, and the reaction needs to go reverse, then we will find the value of x or change negative, and then we can still adjust it. So don't worry about later what's going to happen, but by convention, we are going to use a negative value for change in concentration of reactant and positive value for change in concentration of product. We are using x, and how many x? Is it 1x, 2x, 3x? That corresponds to the coefficient. Coefficient for Vr2 is 1, so this is going to be minus 1x. Coefficient for Vr is 2, then the change is going to be plus 2x. So at the equilibrium, you add the initial and the change. This gives the equilibrium, concentration at equilibrium. So at the equilibrium, some of this has changed the product. And then what's left with the concentration of Br2 at equilibrium. We started with 0 0.012 for Br. And the Br concentration is going to increase. By how much is going to increase? By 2x. Then. We write the expression, equilibrium expression. So step one, write balanced equation. That would be your step one. So one, uh, balanced equation. Two, ice, set up ice. Three, um, KC expression. So when you have the KC expression and four, replace the numbers based on use the use the E values, and that is um, concentration at the equilibrium values for KC. So E values for KC, and then five. Solve for x, 6, find e values.
using X. So, step one, balanced equation. Step two, you set up ice, initial concentration, change, and then you have concentration at equilibrium. Step three, write the expression for Kc. Step four, use the E values, values at the equilibrium for Kc. Step five, solve for x. How do you solve for x? Give a denominator one here, and then use this cross multiplying. So basically, one times this, which is point zero one two plus, okay, square, plus 2x square, uh, plus 4x times point zero one two equals, because this is the, you're going to raise to the power of 2, this expression, equals 1.1 1 .1 times 10 to negative 3 times this first 0 0.063 plus 1.1 1 .1 times 10 to negative 3 x sorry value minus and like terms so you, you want to use your calculator in multi-step i'm not a big fan of putting all the numbers in once in your calculator often is going to give you error so do the the problem stepwise so when you find that um, those steps so it's two times this actually um, two times this so you have the when you have these values when you have these values you are going to bring the like terms, keep the like terms in one side, and you have the, you're going to combine and simplify your equation. You come up with like quadratic equation for x2 minus 0.0491x uh, plus this. So we have quadratic equation. When you have quadratic equation, this you have the general formula, how to solve it. So square root of b2 minus 4ac divided by 2a. So you are using this to find the value for x. When you have the value for x, then you are going to um, solve the, that would, that would be the last step. You have the value for x, you are going to find the, the concentration at equilibrium using the values for x. So concentration of the BR is going to be 0 0.012 plus 2 times this x value. And then concentration for the BR2 is going to be 0 0.062 minus the value for, for x. So this should be 0 0.3. 0 0.063 minus the x value gives you the... Uh, final answer. Okay. Um, Le Chatelier's principle is a principle that applies to system at equilibrium. If you don't have this double arrow, that means the reaction, the same size, that means your reaction is not at equilibrium, and Le Chatelier's principle will not apply to that. But if you have a balance equation with the double arrow, Le Chatelier's principle is going to apply to that, uh, to that uh, reaction at the, uh, or balanced equation at equilibrium. What is Le Chatelier's principle? It's 
is based on external stress. If external stress is applied to a system at equilibrium, the equilibrium is going to shift or the reaction is going to shift in a way that to cancel that um, external pressure or offset, okay, is partially offset as the system reaches new equilibrium. What does it mean it reaches new equilibrium? That means either more product is going to form or more reactant is going to form in order for your reaction to reach new equilibrium. So if your reaction is at equilibrium, that means the concentration of all reactants and products are going to stay constant. And if you have initially at equilibrium and you apply changes, then it's going to change and reaches a new equilibrium where the concentration of the reactants and products are again constant. These two values doesn't have to be exactly the same for hydrogen or for NH3, it doesn't have to be the same as long as the KC stays the same or KP stays the, the same. The ratio must be the same, not the exact values. The exact values could change um, for the concentration, but the ratio is going to become the same again to reach the equilibrium. Okay. So, um, if you have this equation at equilibrium, you add more NH3, the reaction is going to go to the left formation of more N2 and H2. If you add more N2, if you add N2, the reaction is going to go forward in order to consume the excess amount of <clears throat> N2 to produce more NH3 in order to achieve the equilibrium, equilibrium um, constant again. If you add more H2, if you add more H2, then the reaction is going to go forward because you have more reactant and reactant must be constant. If you add NH3, the reaction is going to go reverse. And when it goes in reverse, that means the product is changing to reactant because you want to keep the, the K expression um, the same or balance. So you have to, if the product increases, then the reactant must increase. So if you have these KC expression here, um, if you have more of the product, then these two must increase in order for KC to stay constant. So basically the shift is happening in order to keep the KC value constant. If you add A, the reaction will go forward. If you add B, the reaction will go forward. If you add C, the reaction would go reverse. If you add D, the reaction would go reverse. Now, what happens if you remove D? If you remove D, so in this case, if you remove D, um, you remove D, then that means you don't have enough of the D, the reaction is going to go um, forward. If you remove C, the reaction has to go forward to produce more C. If you remove A, then the reaction has to go, uh, if you remove A, the reaction has to go reverse to produce more A. So increase in concentration of product, the reaction would go left. Decrease in concentration of product, the reaction would go right. How do you remove C? Let's say you have here Cl minus as one of the product. If you bring in Ag plus, 
you add Ag plus, the Ag plus and Cl minus is going to form Ag Cl solid. The Cl is going to come out of the equilibrium. So the concentration at the equilibrium is going to be reduced. Um, that's how you remove C. If uh, remove a product, if your product is water, how would you remove? If you add like dehydrating agent, you remove H2O. And when you remove H2O or you heat up to boil off the H2O, you remove H2O, then it's going to be lowered on the product side and reaction is going to go forward to produce more of the uh, product. What happens if you change the um, if you change the pressure? Um, to change the pressure, okay. if you increase the pressure, the side with the fewest moles of gas is going to form. If you increase the pressure, so you get less number of moles of gas, because if you get less number of moles of gas then you are going to, um, the molar volume. So let's say you have one mole gas, it occupies 22.4 liter, 22.4 liters of gas at STP, and you learn that in 1045. Um, this is the molar volume. If you have two moles of gas, that doubles the volume. So you get like 44.8 liters of gas. Now, if you have, if you increase the pressure, how would you increase the pressure? You probably have to lower the volume. If you lower the volume, then the reaction is gonna go forward in this case because two moles is going to combine to one mole and one mole gas takes less space than two moles gas. So this is for one mole. One mole is 22.4 liters. Two moles is going to need 44.8 liters of space. So if you put more pressure, that means you're lowering the volume. This product is going to be favored because product takes less space. If you decrease the pressure by increasing the volume, then the reaction is going to go produce more moles of gas because now you have more space for the gas. You need more number of moles of gas to be produced. Increasing volume Increasing volume and decreasing pressure is the same thing. That's based on the Boyle's law. P1 V1 equals P2 V2. If you increase the volume, pressure is going to go down. If you decrease the pressure, volume is going to go up. So these two are exact same thing. Decreasing the pressure or increasing volume is the same thing, just so. Remember from, these are the information that you need from the gas loss from 1045. How temperature is going to affect, change in temperature is going to affect the system at equilibrium. If the system at equilibrium is exothermic reaction, a plus B, that gives C plus heat. This is exothermic reaction. So if you know your reaction is exothermic, just add heat to the product side. That means heat has been released. And then draw this equilibrium sign. Now you can answer the question. What happens you increase the temperature? Increase the temperature for exothermic reaction. The heat goes up, product is increased, 
as a result the reaction is going to shift to the reactant side so the reaction is going to go to the left side if you increase the temperature because it's trying to offset that it's trying to, to lessen the amount or compensate with that external pressure you increase the heat the reaction would go to the um, product side i'm oh, sorry the increase the heat for exothermic reaction this reaction doesn't need heat to produce more product so if you give heat heat is one of the product the, you're increasing basically the product and the reaction will go to the left side to produce more of a more of reactant if you remove heat if you remove heat the reaction is going to go to product side that means it has to produce more heat in order to produce more heat more product needs to be produced now if you have endothermic reaction how that is going to be different for endothermic reaction you have a plus b plus heat that gives products and your products could be c or it could be C plus D. The number of products or reactant doesn't matter for endothermic or exothermic. What it matters that heat appears on the reactant side. That means heat has been absorbed. Or heat on the product side. That means heat has been released for exothermic reaction. So this is a endothermic. Now, if it's at equilibrium and it's endothermic reaction, you increase the heat, the reaction is going to go to product. If you decrease the heat, you lower the heat, the reaction will go to reactant side to produce more heat. Basically, it's saying that if the temperature is low for endothermic reaction, product is not going to form. It cannot go to product for endothermic. So the best way is to make sure to write the heat for um, reaction for endothermic in the reactant side for exothermic on the product side and then deal with heat just like a reactant or product and say if it goes up or it goes down how the equilibrium is going to shift next if you add catalyst how it's going to shift the reaction. The reaction is not going to shift if you add catalyst. But what's the effect of catalyst? It's going to make the reaction reach equilibrium faster. So when you add catalyst, the EA is going to change. This is uncatalyzed and catalyzed. EA for forward reaction is right here. So this is your EA for forward reaction. EA for reverse reaction is this much. Activation energy for reverse reaction. When you catalyze the EA for forward reaction is going to be less. EA for reverse reaction also is going to be lower. So it's going to, catalyst is going to make sure the reaction reaches equilibrium faster. So both forward and reverse reaction is going to be affected with the same value. And then the reaction is not going to shift to the left or right. It doesn't mean that more product is going to form. It's just a faster product is going to form. So catalyst does not change the shift of the equilibrium. And this is a summary of the Le Chateau's principle. If you have a system at equilibrium, if you change the concentration, the the um, equilibrium is going to shift 
you add more reactant, it would go to product. You add more product, it would go to the reactant. Why? Because we want to keep the Kc constant. So until the value for Kc is maintained. So the value for Kc is not going to change if you change the concentration of reactant or product. But the equilibrium is going to shift. If you change the pressure, when you have gas molecules as reactant or product, equilibrium is going to shift. If you increase the pressure, it would go to the side with less number of moles of gas. If you decrease the pressure, it would go to side with um, more number of moles of gas. But at the end, it would reach the equilibrium that Kc is maintained. So the Kc or equilibrium constant is not going to change. Volume also is going to affect for the concentration and um, pressure. Um, so the equilibrium is going to shift. So when the equilibrium is shifting to reach the new Kc value, so Kc value is not going to change. The only thing that changes the Kc value is the temperature. So temperature is going to change the shift of the equilibrium, and it also changes the value for Kc. Catalyst, it doesn't change either one of them, but what it does is going to increase the um, speed of the reaction. Okay, It would change the speed of the reaction. So that's the end of the... Um, Overview of equilibrium expression um, chapter, which you need your, for unit four. And um, I'm going to stop the recording here.